Bless. Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. It's the first book in the New Testament. Last Sunday was the first book in the Old Testament. Now it's the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5. We are going to read one verse, uh, and then from there we're going to pray, and God is going to speak to us this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, and, and please mark this down. Uh, I have some notes that I wanted to give our media team, and, and somehow I misplaced them, and I didn't put them there. So if you're taking mental notes, please do so. If you're writing down notes, please do, please do so, because you're going to be blessed. One verse only. Matthew chapter 5, do we have it already on the screen? Verse 13. Verse 13. Now, the version up there is going to be a little bit different. I like to read from a completely different version, but it's the same meaning, and I want you to follow with me. Verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5. Everybody, when you have it, say a loud amen. 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 The Word of God says, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is the salt if it has lost its flavor? How can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. We're going to um, be preaching from Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to be looking in through different versions here uh, this, this morning. And I have a version here that I was reading earlier, and I wanted to share this with you. But we're going to be talking from the title... Flavor of love. Like that great theologian rapper would say it, flavor of love. <laughs> this morning, we're going to be uh, talking on that subject, flavor of love, with a subtitle, a subtitle, Pass the Salt. With that in mind, I, I want to share a story with you of a young boy who went away to his first summer camp. And his mama was excited and one named this little boy, little Johnny. And little Johnny was excited to go on his first summer camp. And he goes and he comes back from his summer camp and his mama is waiting for little Johnny. And little Johnny runs down and he's all excited. And mama goes up to little Johnny and says, little Johnny, how was the camp? He goes, it was great. I had a good time. He goes, and then the mama asks, how did your friends uh, treat you? How do they act around you now that you are a Christian? And little Johnny all excited saying, mama, let me tell you, there was no problem. Not even one of them could guess that I was a Christian. You guys missed the point. You guys get it in a little bit. Here's the thing that we get to the story of this event where Jesus is preaching on the mountain. The famous Sermon of the Mountain. And as we relate the story of little Johnny, and it was exciting because nobody could tell that he was a Christian. Even though there's some humors in that, yet it's also tragic and unfortunately and too realistic in today's culture, in today's society, because Many professed Christians, many professed believers, we go about our normal traffic daily routine life. And so many times, many of our coworkers, many of our friends and relatives and neighbors don't even know that we are Christians. Don't even know what our faith is. Don't even know what we stand for. And we live in that kind of situation in our times in a time where our society is decaying, in a time where our morals and values and structure is decaying, the Lord Jesus himself comes and makes this statement and says, you are the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. And God gives this warning and he preaches to his disciples and, and I want you to see the amazing thing of the story this morning because as Jesus is speaking to his disciples, the Bible says that there's a great multitude following him. There is always a large crowd following Jesus. The Bible tells us in chapter 5 verse 1 that he began, he started to teach his disciples. And he wanted his disciples to know and understand you are the salt of the earth. And he gives them this warning and he tells them the tragic result. Should you ever lose your flavor, it's the fact that then at that point it is good 
for nothing. And God gives this warning. Jesus gives this warning. So that's why I believe that this morning it is important. It is a great urgent for everyone, young and old, to know and to understand the effects that we are to be as we are to be the salt of the earth. And we're going to go through the word of God, through scripture, and I'm going to share with you Four different effects that we should be on this earth, in this society, in this culture, young people at school, and everyone else in our society, in our work environment, in our offices, we are to be. This four different effects, and I'm going to start with number one. Number one, the salt preserves. The salt preserves. I remember growing up in, uh, living in uh, one time in our lives when, when I was a lot younger, I remember growing up in Seguin, Texas. How many know where Seguin, Texas is at? Seguin, Texas. And, and we lived there for a couple of years. And we were at this house, and, and my grandparents, they lived right next to us. And, and one, there was one occasion when our refrigerator broke down, and it's not with a family of 11. It's not like you could go to any lax or, and just buy a new refrigerator. So what we did is we put some of our groceries in grandma's refrigerator. Now, my grandma was three and a half feet tall, and uh, don't laugh, that's my grandma. <laughs> and if you guys remember, I don't know how many of you guys remember the refrigerators that were like four feet tall. You guys remember those refrigerators? There you opened a single door, and it had the freezer and, and the cooling part. You guys don't remember that? And grandma had one of those, and, and we took some of our groceries, and we put them there. But see, it was a small refrigerator. It didn't have enough room to put all the food and everything. So... One morning, I remember my dad waking up and then waking us up. And, and now when I was wake up with my dad, and he says, hey, go up to grandma's refrigerator and the refrigerator. There are some pork chops there. And there's a piece of ham. Go ahead and bring it. Mama's going to make some good breakfast here for everybody this morning. So I just come out of the house, go to grandma's house. You know, I can go to grandma's house any time, open the refrigerator. And I'm looking for the pork chops, and I'm looking for the piece of, uh, of ham, and I can't find it nowhere. So I tell grandma, grandma, dad says that there were some pork chops and, and, and ham in the refrigerator refrigerator and I remember this vividly because she starts to laugh and says Mijito just follow me and we walked down the kitchen and we went to the back door there was a smaller room in the back and right there on the floor there was this wooden box on the floor and she opened this large wooden box and and all I can see now I know what it was but all I can see was a layer of salt and under the layer of salt were the pork chops and under the pork chops was another layer of salt and then there was the piece of ham, which was laid on top of another layer of salt. And I didn't understand the reason why, but I'll tell you one thing. Them pork chops and ham taste really good. <laughs> they tasted really good. I mean, she literally made a suicide breakfast that morning, you know, and it was really, really good. And my point to this is that this pork chop and, and the ham was able to be preserved with salt without the need of being refrigerated because salt preserves it preserves i don't know how many of you guys have ever tried that please don't try that now but i want you to understand this that we are living in a decaying culture we're living in a time where our social structure that used to be sound and used to be strong they're rotting away our marriage values are being redefined by our society. Our cultures and the structures and our values and beliefs are being put aside. Everything is decaying. It started with taking God out of school. Then it went to taking the Bible out of school. Then it went to taking prayers out of school. And then it went to where you couldn't talk about God at work. And then they're redefining the marriage. And all our morals, all our beliefs, all our structures is decaying. And then the message of that God is saying you are the salt of the earth so how does that work for us if the salt preserves God is saying you and I have been called have been chosen to preserve the morals and the values and the beliefs that God himself established in this place you see our government is changing all that our society is changing all that. Our young people have no idea of the great changes and differences that, that they're living in on right now. And everything is decaying. Today it's normal and it's okay. 
to do the things the kids are doing, to do the things that are allowed in a society when God in his word establishes and said, no, it's not. What's happening, unfortunately, so many churches, so many Christians, so many pastors and preachers and evangelists all over the world, but especially here in America, what we are doing, we are allowing everything that is decaying, everything that is rotten, everything that's going to spoil, we are allowing that to come into our culture. In the time that we are supposed to make an impact in the difference in the world, the world has been coming into the church and making a difference and an impact in our churches all over America. And God is saying, you are the salt of the earth. He's saying, you are to preserve the morals that I've given you in Scripture. You are to preserve the beliefs that I've given you in Scripture. You are to preserve the marriage definition that God alone himself has given us as a church to preserve. So if the world wants to roll around in the mud and, and if society wants to redefine and, and change whatever they want to do, so what? God was never intrigued by the numbers. Go back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible says that a great multitude followed Jesus. He always had a multitude following him. There was even religious people that were following Jesus. But when he starts to open his mouth and when he starts to preach and teach, he was preaching and teaching to a small group of 12 men because he understood that it took only this small group to make a big difference in this world. And it starts with us here this morning. Parents, grandparents, teach your kids now. Don't let them compromise. Don't let their minds be corrupted with the things that the world is changing now in their days. Let them know it might be okay in the world, but with God, it's not okay. The world might say, let it be everything it's approved, but God says, I have set the right and I have set the wrong. I have set the white and I have set the black. God is the one that defines the morals and the values. You and I cannot compromise that. You and I have been called and challenged, and God says, you are the salt of the earth. It is your job, it is my job to preserve those morals, those beliefs. And church, if we start giving in, if we start allowing all these things happening, let me tell you, 10, 15 years from now, we, our, our young people, our young generation, will not have a clue what marriage is all about. Can I hear an Amen. They will not have any clue of what it is to honor and respect authorities and respect the elders. They will not. And God is calling us to preserve. To preserve. If you spare the rod, what are you, what's going to happen? God is speaking to somebody this morning. Young people, you can't compromise. You see, the world tells you it's okay. See, the world tells you that's fine. The world tells you everybody's doing it. The world tells you, you know what? This is one thing. You go out there, that's another thing. But God is saying, I have said it. And the standard is like, either, either you, you're hot or either you're cold, but you can't be lukewarm. Because if you lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Either you walk in obedience or you walk in disobedience. We're church are called to be able to, to stand and preserve. So the salt preserved. Point number two. The salt flavors. The salt flavors. Food without salt is tasteless and flat. Can I hear an amen? amen. Where are my brothers at? Can you raise your hand, brothers? Where are my brothers? Where are my brothers at? Let me say this again, brothers. Food without salt is tasteless and flat, brothers. Amen. amen. Did you hear that, sister? You make sure you don't cook for them for a whole week. But when you add a little bit of salt, oh, there's a great taste. When you add a little bit of salt. I remember a few weeks ago, I was sitting down. I'm not going to tell you where, but I was eating this large bowl of what we call chile con carne. Everybody understands that. I mean, it was a large bowl. It was delicious. I mean, it takes a lot to keep this figure, so I needed this large bowl. I had myself some cornbread and some shredded cheese with some onions ready to eat and I take one scoop and I know I'm making some of you hungry you just say amen and praise the Lord and I took the first scoop and then I took another scoop and right when I was doing that thank you very much there was no taste to it very unpleasant without wanting to complain for safety reasons <laughs> I grab the salt shaker 
and just drink a little bit of salt. And I'm going to tell you, that next scoop, that next scoop would tell the story. Oh, it was delicious. It was delicious. I, I think I went for seconds. I'm, I'm not sure. I, don't quote me on that, Brother Tom. But I think I, I did go for seconds. Just a small sprinkle of salt made a big difference. A big, big difference. Here's the thing. We often think, Christians, we are outnumbered out there. We are minority, and maybe we are. Maybe we are a number, or maybe we are minority. But I'm going to tell you, when Jesus is telling us, you are the salt of the earth, he's saying, that's all I need to put some flavor into this world. And young people know, people, I want you to listen to me. We are living in a world that is so tasteless. We're living in the world that is so unpleasant. This is why we have, listen to this, we have friends and relatives that are committing suicide because all they know is a tasteless life we have marriages divorcing at a high rate because all they know is a tasteless life of love we have men and women jumping from one bed to another bed changing their partners like they would change socks because they're trying to find taste in this tasteless life but they can't find it and Jesus, he said, you are the salt of the earth you are the one that are to come and put some flavor in this earth they need to see that there is something different. They need to see that there is a different life. They need to see that they will find eternal life in Jesus. That they will find the ultimate love in Jesus Christ. And you and I are to expose that. You and I are to show that because salt flavors. Amen. And God is telling us that this morning. But this is what is happening. Meanwhile, churches all over the world, not here, I'm talking about all the other churches. They become so religious, and instead of spending our time sprinkling some flavor in this tasteless world, we're spending time gossiping. We're spending time in bitterness. We're spending time in just backstabbing each other, and God is saying it's time to stop, play church, be the church, put some flavor on this tasteless society and culture, and make a difference. Make a difference for Jesus. You are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the world. I pray that this message is speaking to your heart. Because I'm telling you, we're living in the end times. You know, so many, so many of us as the church members and Christians, we're saying God is coming back and we get excited and praise the Lord. But let me tell you, with that excitement, it should also be a desire and a passion and an ache and a pain in our hearts to say, God, there are still loved ones that I want them to be saved. I want them to be touched. And this is where you and I become the salt of the earth. So salt preserves. Salt flavors. Number three, salt stings. Salt stings. I remember we moved to Alice in 1992, not too long ago. And being a family of 11, and uh, our, our fun time, our vacation time and fun time was to go to the corporate, go to the beach. There, there, there was no Six Flags, there, there, there was none of that stuff for us. And we would go there, and, and, and let me tell you one thing, if, if there's anyone that has ever gone to, to the beach with salt water, and you have a cut or a scratch, come on now, as soon as you get into that water, the salt water is going to let you know, hey, I'm here. And you can feel that right away. As soon as he meets that open wound, he makes his presence known. What Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth. And if you have not gotten any other points, you better get this one. Because this is what Jesus is saying. Our lives should bring conviction, should sting those around us. Our lives should bring conviction. Yes, it is important that our presence preserves. It is important that our presence bring flavor. But it is also very important that our presence stings when it comes into contact with worldly actions and worldly attitudes. Listen to me, young people. It is important because Jesus is saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. And let me tell you that when you walk into where there's worldly action and there's worldly attitude, somebody's going to be uncomfortable. Somebody don't want to hang around with no hallelujah and holy roller because there's some conviction there. Sometimes we go as an undercover agent and we come out like little Johnny and say, they didn't even know that I was a Christian. But here's the thing that I want you to see this morning. You see, we as the salts of the earth, sometimes we need to sting a little bit. 
our convictions, our transformation, the evidence that we are not the same, the evidence that we're new, born again, Christian, that evidence has to be displayed in the people around us. Young people that when your friends see you at school, they wonder, how come you don't talk like us? How come you don't do the same things that we're doing? There needs to be a little bit of sting there. Even though my friends might not want to talk to me, might not want to hang around with me, it's okay because we have to sting a little bit because we are the salt of the earth. I remember we had this good friend, this family that were good, good friends of ours. And, and we, if we weren't barbecuing at my house, we were at their house. And, and we were spending every time together. And I remember this was many, many years ago. We would joke around, you know. They had three daughters the same age of my boys. And we would joke around that their daughters were going to marry our boys. That's how close we were. Oh, but as soon as they heard that we were coming to church... As soon as they knew that we couldn't go to the same places that they were going to, that we couldn't talk the way they talked, that we couldn't laugh at their dirty jokes anymore, the phone call stopped, the invitation stopped, and I praise God that it did because there was a little bit of salt there and it was stinging really hard. But I thank God for that conviction because they were able to see something different is going on here. Do you go to your workplace? Do your neighbors? Could they tell that there's something different? Will they be able to tell that there is something different in your life? There's something different in your speech. There's something different in your conversation. You're not laughing at them dirty jokes. You're walking away. There is something different. We are called to be the salt of the earth, and the salt will sting. And we're called to do the same thing. They might feel uncomfortable. They might not want to hang around with us. They might not want to talk to us. But I want you to know, let your convictions on Jesus Christ, let your standards on Jesus Christ, let your beliefs on Jesus Christ be known. Now you can make it very gracefully. After all, those that have the love of God can give the flavor of love. And we can do that. God is calling us to do that. And we are to make a difference in this world. And we are to be able not just to preserve it, to give flavor, but to sting a little bit. Take me to the last point this morning. Salt creates a thirst. Salt create a thirst. I remember reading the story of this man by the name of Jerry. He was the owner of a movie theater. He had just converted, given his life to Jesus. And one day from work, he stops at his pastor's office and he gets off and he says, Pastor, I, I need to confess something to you, something that has been bothering me ever since I, I gave my life to Jesus and I know I got to get it out of my chest. He goes, and here's the thing, he goes, I used to tell my employees, every box of popcorn, I wanted them to put extra salt in their popcorn. You see, the logical thing, the results of that would be that the customer then will either buy more drinks or buy larger drinks. Because believe it or not, salt creates a thirst in us. So he wanted to confess this. Now when I read this story, I wonder and I ask, could there be one of the reasons why Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth? Could it be possible that in our Christian walk, in our Christian life, on top of the praises and the singing and the coming to Sunday school and, and fellowship and Bible study, we have to have an ingredient in our lifestyle. We have to have that ingredient in our character. That when we're walking with people, when we come around people, we make them so thirsty for Jesus. That they wonder and they ask, how is it that you can have joy in the midst of your circumstances? How is it that you can have peace? Can we make people thirsty for Jesus? Or do people come to you saying, hey, do you go into church again? And you're like, well, I have to, you know, they already made the invitation. Or do you say, no, I am going through those doors with thanksgiving in my heart because God has been good to me. He has blessed me. He has protected me. He has kept me. And let me tell you, they're going to want to know, I want some of that, Jesus. I want some of that that is changing your life upside down and out. I want some of that. Our convictions, our character that is displaying more of Jesus supposed to make others thirsty. Young people, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. We should make the people of the world thirsty for Jesus. 
with our character, with our attitudes. Unfortunately, listen up right here, this front row. Unfortunately, we're not passing on the salt enough. Amen? Unfortunately, we're not passing it on enough. And people are, are not getting thirsty enough for Jesus. Our neighbors, our community, our schoolwork. But you know, when I was preparing for this message, my prayer is, God, I want, I want you to make me into the person that whenever I encounter somebody out there, somebody in the community, I want them to wonder. I want them to ask of the joy and of the hope that I have in Jesus Christ so that I can be able to tell them, once I was thirsty, but I came to the fountain of life. Once I was thirsty, but I came to Jesus and he quenched my thirst. And I want them to say, I want some of that Jesus in your life. I want to make them thirsty for Jesus. And it starts with me. And it starts with me displaying that in my life. And church, my challenge for you this morning is the same. My challenge for you this morning is to be able to share Jesus with them. But tragically, we are living in a time where the salt seems to be losing its flavor. Where the salt seems to be losing its power to sting and its purpose. But in the words of Jesus himself says that when this happened, it is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot by man. Each and every one of us, born again Christian, we are to walk with that thought in our minds. You are the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. And know that God has called us into this place to make a difference. I told you already, God is not impressed by the number. It starts with one. It starts with one. And this is what God is speaking to us this morning. The flavor of love that he's calling us to be. In the world system, they need to realize that. They need to see that. God is calling us to make a difference in a society, in a culture, with moral and everything else is going downhill. I want you to turn your Bibles with me real quick to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Turn your Bibles. As you turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 4, the question to finish this morning is this. How can we be the salt of the earth? Preacher, I've heard that we are to be the salt of the earth because the salt preserves, the salt flavors, the, the, the salt uh, stings a little bit. The salt, it's going to make all these differences and the salt, it's going to make others thirsty for Jesus. But how can I be the salt of the earth? Go to me with, to Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2, 1 down. I'm going to read this and then we, I'm going to break it down real quick for you. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 says, Devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and thankful heart. Pray for us too that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim his message as clearly as I should. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and seasoned with, with salt so that you will have the right response for everyone. The question might be, how can I be the salt of the earth? Colossians chapter 4 verse Verse 2 tells us a couple of things, and I'm going to give you this last seven points, and so we're finished. Number one, it's prayer. It's prayer. It's dedication of prayer in your life. Having a praying life. And I always tell you this when I talk about prayer. It's more than just praying for your meals. It's a quiet time between you and God. And say, God, I want to be the salt of the earth. I want to make a difference. I want to bring flavor in a tasteless world. I want to make a difference in this world. I want others to thirst for you as they see me walk with you. As they see your son Jesus live through me. I want to be able to sting a little bit with my conviction that I'm changed and I'm not the same anymore. And be able to preserve what your word has set as standards and values. Prayer. Two. To be watchful. Talks about spiritual alertness. 
to be watched for. Number three is being thankful. That's to have a grateful spirit. If you want to make a difference, if you want to impact your community, your family, and your friends, you have to create in your life a praying time. A be watchful and to be grateful. Number four is to pray for each other. We have to lift up each other. How can we be the salt of the world? And how can we make a difference if we don't pray for each other, if we don't lift up each other? I don't know what my brother's encountering at work. I don't know what his struggles are in his family, but I'm gonna pray that God gives him strength, that God gives him grace and favor. We are to pray for each other. Number five, when he says being wise, young people, it talks about making smart choices, making smart decisions. You want to be the salt of the earth. It starts with making wise choices. And so many times we make foolish ones. And it says being wise in actions when unbelievers let the world see that there is something different. Let the world see that there's an alternative life to the lifestyle that they're living in. Let them see Jesus in us. And the last one, and we talked about this a little bit in our Sunday school, is our speech. Our speech, our conversation, they have to be good. They have to be uplifting. They have to be encouraging. They have to be when we speak, we are to speak gracefully. When we answer, we have to answer right and answer gracefully. Those are the ways that we can be the salt of the earth. That's how we can make a difference. It's praying. It's encouraging each other. It's being alert, being aware. It's making wise decisions, wise choices. It's being grateful for what God is doing, what he has done, and what he's going to do. It's praying for each other, encouraging each other, praying for the church, praying for our leaders and our teachers and our pastor. It's in our conversation and in our speech. And to be able to do all that with love. Be able to do all that with grace. Here's the, the heart of the message. The real issue this morning is the question that Jesus asked. If it loses its flavor, how can the earth be seasoned? Think on that question from.